physiology of nose and penis and measurement of the nasal airway the mucus layer blanket the goblet cells in the nasal mucosa secrete a mucus blanket it moves backward like a conveyor belt into the nasopharynx it consists of the superficial mucus or the gel layer and deep serous or the sol layer always remember if you want to remember the sol soil and above soil there is a gel layer so deep serous or sol layer and superficial mucus or gel layer so this is the mucus blanket this is the cilia the sol layer the gel layer and the particles trapped in the gel layer here we can see the transportation of the trapped particles into the nasopharynx this is the mucus layer this is a serous layer and this is the cilia beating we need to understand that always the cilia beats back and forth moving the layer forward now this is the mucus layer clearance of the pns now we can see how the mucus layer clearance of the maxillary sinus is taking place towards the ostia and same is the frontal sinus the normal cilia beats back and forth propelling the mucus and the trapped particles out of the sinus cilia can become paralyzed during the acute sinusitis sinuses are congested with the mucus chronic sinusitis may further damage the cilia the mucosal lining become thick and scarred when well, the factor compromise comp compromising the mucus layer functions are a dry atmosphere smoking air pollutants and nasal irritants infections excessive summer and excessive cold hypoxia drugs like anesthetics sedatives topical nasal decongestants and beta blockers measurement of the nasal airway the commonly used the measurements of the nasal airway are the objective and the subjective in objective there is a rhino manometry the acoustic rhino metry rhino stereometry peak nasal flow and the nasal sense well in rhino manometry it is a dynamic test of the nasal function that calculates nasal airway resistance so rhino manometry it calculates the resistance how nasal resistance to air flow is calculated in a two uh, from two measurements the transnasal pressure and the nasal air flow so both these parameters are measured by means of the differential pressure transducers manometer nasal air flow is measured by flow head that consists of a gauge resistance inside a cone shaped tube here we can see the pressure difference ac across the gauge generated by the air flow through the tube is used to measure the air flow the transnasal pressure can be measured by the relating the pressure at the posterior nares to that of the entrance of the nostrils which will normally be atmospheric pressure or the nasal mask pressure well in this there is active rhino manometry and the passive rhino manometry the difference is that in passive rhino manometry it involves a generation of the nasal air flow and pressure from the external source such as a fan or pump whereas in active rhino manometry the patient itself generates the flow by normal breathing and this can be further divided into anterior and posterior method according to the location of the pressure sensing tube so types of rhino manometry are the active anterior rhino manometry active posterior rhino manometry and the pass passive anterior rhino manometry this we can see how this is a placement this is the posterior rhino manometry according to the location of the sensing tube now the acoustic rhino manometry in this the acoustic pulse is transmitted along the tube into the nose which is reflected back from the inside of the nose according to the changes in the local acoustic impedance which are related to cross sectional area of the nasal cavity so it can identify the narrowest part of the nasal cavity or the minimal cross sectional area in rhino manometry we were checking the resistance and this we can uh, we are identifying the narrowest part of the nasal cavity or the minimal cross sectional area so it usually correspond to the nasal valve area this is how it is done the acoustic rhino manometry provides a measure of the nasal cross sectional area along the length of the nasal passage unlike the rhino manometry which is limited to the measurement of the narrowest point of the nasal airway it only tells about the nearest point but it tells the cross sectional area the normal values of the minimal cross sectional area 
फॉर ए नेजल पैसेज पॉइंट पॉइंट सेवन स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर विच इंक्रीजेज ऑन डी कंजेशन टू पॉइंट नाइन स्क्वायर सेंटीमीटर वेरियस डेविएशन ऑफ नेजल स्ट्रक्चर लाइक द वॉल्स टीनोसिस सेप्टल डेविएशन एंड टर्बोनेट हाइपोट्रॉफिक कैन बी डायग्नोज No, the peak nasal flow, the peak inspiratory or the expiratory air flow through the nose, associated with the maximal respiratory effort, can be used as a measure of the nasal conductance. The measurement is effort dependent and is less sensitive than the rhinomanometry and acoustic rhinometry in determining the small changes in conductance. Peak flow instrument like the right, mini right. and yolton flow meters are used to measure the nasal peak flow measurement of the peak inspiratory flow rate may be useful for assessing the large changes in the nasal conductance such as those associated with the nasal challenge and nasal decongestion now the nasalizens nasalizens measured by the pair of directional microphones mounted on either side of the heart palate ratio of nasality of the sound output from nose versus the mouth so they inversely proportional to the nasal airway resistance and normal is 40% now the rhino stereometry well the inferior nasal turbinate exhibits a spontaneous congestion and decongestion associated with the filling and emptying of the nasal venous sinuses in the nasal epithelium that causes a tip of the turbinate to move in the position by several millimeters measuring the position of the inferior turbinate by the binocular microscope is termed as a rhino stereometry Studies on the nasal cycle has demonstrated that the mucosal swelling causes the turbinate to change position by up to 3.5 mm. So rhino stereometry has also been used to measure the changes in the swelling of the inferior nasal turbinate associated with the rhinitis medicamentosa. Subjective measurements the patient's perception to nasal symptom is of primary concern to the patient. Objective measures of the nasal function do not always correlate with the patient's own assessment of the nasal sensation this is because the resistance to the nasal airflow is primarily determined by the nasal valve area where the symptoms of the nasal obstruction may be influenced by other areas of the nose as well as the nasal valve area so the factors that affect the results are the vasoconstrictors the surgery and the nasal cycle the nasal challenge test this test provide the precise measurement of the challenge changes in the nasal airway resistance along with the observation such as the number of sneezes and the measurement of the inflammatory mediators in the nasal secretion after the exposure to an allergen the most commonly known sniff test uses a visual assessment of the mucosal swelling and the rhinorrhea after a small amount of dry pollen is inhaled thank you